but uh, I, I like to put this in con connection with the, uh, another very, very lively issue which I happen to be involved with, which is the question of a analog computing versus digital computing. That we all grew up, uh, those of us who are old, with analog computers in the shape of slide rules. Slide rules, of course, were wonderful for practical purposes. They were analog devices which everybody used in the old times for doing simple calculations. Now, of course, they're considered to be totally obsolete. Instead, we have a little computer that gives you seven-figure accuracy and, and much quicker, much more versatile. So the, the general belief is that the digital age is the future and the analog age is the past. However, I don't think that's true. If you look, in fact, at the mathematics, there was a fellow called Turing, Alan Turing, who was the sort of grandfather of the digital age. And he came from the side of logic, that uh, he was a actually a, a, a student of mathematical logic. And he invented the notion of computability. He wrote a wonderful paper in 1936 called On Computable Numbers, in which he demonstrated two things. First of all, the existence of a universal computer that could do everything that any digital computer could do, so that you could actually build a universal machine that could be programmed to imitate any digital computer. So it would, it would be able to answer any question that you could solve by digital means. And he also said the second theorem he proved is that there are questions which that universal computer could not answer, particularly a thing called the halting problem, whether a, 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 a given machine, given a problem, would come to a halt or not. And that's an undecidable question in a strict mathematical sense. Anyway, so uh, that's what Turing did in the year 1936, which led to the computer age that we're living in. We put all our information into digital form. We have, uh, it is now a digital world, and everybody believes that's going to last. I have suspicion it's not going to last. And there's another mathematical paper, which people are not so much aware of, by two gentlemen called Purell and Richards in 1981 in the journal called Advances in Mathematics which is proving that, in fact, there are numbers which are computable analog, which are not computable digital. That, uh, that's also a mathematical theorem. That, uh, so there are well-defined questions that could be decided by an analog computer, which cannot be decided by a digital computer. So in a certain sense, in, in a mathematical sense, analog computing is more powerful. And I believe that that is, in fact, the reason why artificial intelligence has been such a total flop. We have been promised for 50 years that we would have artificial intelligence, that is, computers that could really w w think like humans and be in intelligent in some practical fashion. And, of course, that's been a dismal failure. And I think the probable reason is that all our machines are digital, but the human brain is probably analog. And, and, uh, the reason I think the human brain is analog, of course, I'm not an expert, but it's, it's, uh, if you look at what we're really doing all the time, we're, what we're really good at is comparing pictures in memory, that you look at a face and you know immediately, that's Martin, that's my friend Martin Rees. And, and uh, how do you know that? Well, because you pull the memory out of your store, make the comparison in a, fr in a fraction of a second. And in, a, in the same fashion, he says something, you immediately understand what he says because you're comparing a sequence of words with something in your memory. So that the, this ability to rapidly compare either visual scenes or audit, auditory sequences is something we're born with, which and is much more powerful than arithmetic, which is something we have to learn. So in our, in our brains, the comparison of images came before the ability to calculate numbers. Anyhow, that's my, my, my conjecture. So I would expect that when there finally is a, a artificial intelligence, it will actually be analog and not digital. And th so that's something that will have a profound effect when we know how to build machines that do resemble our brains. Of course, 
we will be in a different world again. So that's, anyway, that's my, uh, my pitch for the, for the future. If you really want to understand the nature of the universe in some deep sense, if you want to understand its purpose, what we really want, uh, want to understand is mind. We want to understand good and evil. We want to understand emotion. We want to understand human factors much more than galaxies and planets. So thank you very much, that's enough.